bottom of the screen, there's people who are in but not visible. Right. Okay. okay, well, it's three o'clock. Are we going to, we'll call the meeting to order. We'll start with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Caitlin, do we have any additions, deletions, or substitutions to the agenda? No, sir. All right, they're, they're being done. We'll turn this over to, uh, We'll recognize Gentile, Glass, and Holloway on, on behalf of the uh, applicant or, or on behalf of the, uh, I guess, is it new owner or potential new owner? What's the status? Potential new owner. Okay. And George is still on mute. So I, I just sent George a text to tell him he's muted. I don't know if that's going to help or not. I did ask him to unmute. I'll see if I can reach out to him as well. Thank you. Thank you. Are we gonna introduce who everybody is in case they don't know us? <laughs> um, sure, we, we can do introductions. We'll just wait for, for George to get off of mute and see if, we'll, we'll see what his pleasure is since he'll, he'll have the floor. They are having a little bit of technical difficulty to GHO, but they should be on shortly. They're working on it right now. Okay. Don't cough, you're going to be front and center if you cough. Sorry. <laughs> Whoever talks to you at the big screen, just kidding. No, you're good. George, I now you can stretch you hear me. We have a little, we had a little issue here with the, um, 
with trying to get the plans uh, to me that we had for uh, to show you. Derek is here. Uh, Derek, do you want to introduce yourself first, and and then yeah, I'll, I'll absolutely. get the plans up in in about two minutes. Okay. Um, okay. Very good. Thank you, George. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Derek Busich. I am representing our family. My mother, Lois, is also on this call here. And uh, we are currently under contract to purchase that site at US-1 and Donald Ross. And the purpose of this workshop is to get a sense of, um, you know, what kind of feedback we might get for our proposed, uh, proposed concept plan here and um, you know, get a sense of what everybody's thoughts are and, and go from there. Okay, and George, do you, you know who everybody is here? Yes, and I have, um, just so you know, I have Troy Holloway here with me um, and uh, Alec Dickinson, one of our senior planners. Um, our, our issue right this second, if you can give me a minute, is that we, we were trying to go through to pull the uh, drawings off of our server and um, we were unable to. So they're, they're sending them to me. There we go. We're getting them. Here we go. We may, we may get this right here. This, this high tech stuff is a little tough. <laughs> But um, as you all know, we've been working on um, the, uh, this property for quite some time. Um, Derek's uh, company came in and um, what I'm gonna do is I'll pull this one up. There we go. And then I'm gonna share the screen here, hopefully. There we go. Okay, there we go. Can you all see that? Yes. Okay, um, so we have been working with Derek, uh, and I know he's had a number of conversations with some of the council people, I, maybe all of you, maybe not. Um, and for those planning commissioners that are here, um, this will be your first time. But as you know, this is the property that is at the northwest corner of Donald Ross Road in US 1. It's called the Juno Point piece. Um, we've had a number of uh, plans that we brought through with the current owner, which is uh, Barry um, Brandt. Brandt. And um, uh, Derek has a, right now has a contract to purchase. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Troy. He's gonna go, unless Derek, you wanna go over the plan. It's, it's up to you. We can have Troy just go over it briefly and then you can go over your uh, your business um, uh, plan for this area. Yeah, let's have Troy introduce, um, kind of introduce what we're looking at and I can elaborate from there. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello guys, how are you? <laughs> um, again, this, this is the plan here. Um, I, I guess the thoughts and the desire from a lot of people were to kind of mimic the, the approval that we had back in 2005. Um, so as you can tell this from a glance, this is very, very similar to the, uh, to the old approved drawing uh, and plans that were done. Um, essentially, so what Derek is doing here is he's got uh, assisted living facility uh, on the back half and uh, condominiums on the eastern half. So on the back half you there, what you've got in each of the corners um, is a three-story assisted living facility. Um, that right now, again, this is just a very conceptual graphic, but right now we're showing them connected via just uh, some covered arcades. Um, I don't know if, you know if they're gonna have to function with an uh, enclosed connection or not, but at, at this point, they're just uh, uh, covered arcades. So there are three story facilities. Um, and then we've shown you'd have some covered arcades along the interior. Uh, yeah, along the interior, we've got uh, covered arcades all the way along the interior in here. This is the covered arcade connecting the two. And in the back, the, other, uh, the northwest corner building, again, we'd have some nice covered arcades. Uh, would be really nice. And then we've got some, and again, with being ALF, we'll have a lot of gardens, a lot of sensory gardens and sensory uh, garden walks and fountains. Um, so it'd be a really, be a very nice uh, facility. And then 
on the eastern half uh, is would be the six-story condominium. So the thought here is it's, it's a six-story building. Um, the entry points are going to be the same as uh, the original plan, and pretty much the same as all the drawings we've been coming in with. Those these access points were approved preliminarily by DOT. So we have the one point here coming in from US-1 and then the other one from Donald Ross. Uh, this point coming in off of US-1, the thought here with this plan is again, it's a six story building. This would be a two story opening. Uh, so essentially then above that, you'd have four more stories above. So this would be a covered, uh, really high covered area with some drop off spaces that you would drive through. Uh, and then we've got some surface parking um, in here with an interior uh, sculptural fountain uh, garden. And then of course you have the other access here with drop-offs on either side of it uh, from Donald Ross Road. Um, and, and similar again to the 2005 plan, um, we've got underground parking here. They had it accessed from I think two areas. One, they had it accessed from, you'd come in from Plaza Le Mare, which we did not do as that the scenery there is not the greatest. Um, so our thought would be as you come up here and then access, you'd ramp down below, you'd enter these two buildings and then ramp down. And just like the old plan, the, essentially the entire, not the entire underground, but this, there's a whole loop here, this all underground has about 300, spot, 300 plus parking spaces. Uh, so the majority of the parking is all underground and, and hidden from view. Um, the units, the yeah, units. we've got, uh, of course, the plan here for the condominiums. We've got 100 condominium units um, and 40 ALF units. Um, the plan here as well is to have some restaurant space. It's hard to see graphically, but the idea would be this corner would be, we've got about 8,000 feet right now slated for restaurant use. Um, and it'd be really nice to plan here to be have tables underneath this covered arcade. Um, I know the desire has always been to keep that public plaza that was planned for that project here on the corner of US-1 and Donald Ross. We show a nice big open plaza with a fountain. Uh, the thought here, we have some nice, you know, some nice seating walls. Maybe they could be lit up really nice at night on both sides of this as well, all bricked uh, plaza. Um, so as far as the site plan goes, I think that's pretty much it. Again, you know, you can see here on the assisted living facility, we've got some nice, nice courtyard walks out along Donald Ross Road. We've got some nice uh, buffers, 45 feet along Donald Ross Road and US Highway 1 uh, with this plan and then the 20 foot uh, basic setbacks on the north and west. Um, we've also proposed that with this plan, I think we would want a six foot screen wall to separate this parcel from the commercial parcel uh, to the north and to the west as well. Um, I think that pretty much covers the site plan. Derek, I don't know if you want to talk how that would function, if you want to take it. From sure, there. let me, um, yeah, let me elaborate from there after Troy's good summary. Um, a couple of key things to point out. Number one, the condominiums would be strictly for sale to anybody in the public. They would not be age restricted. There is no formal affiliation with the assisted okay. living um, um, on the Western I'm portion of the site. Right. Thanks. So that's, that's point number one. Number two, the, uh, the restaurant space that we have allocated kind of on that southeastern corner, that could be some sort of mixture of, um, you know, like a coffee shop and an ice cream shop and some boutique retail. You know, it, it, it is not necessarily just one 8,000 square foot restaurant. Um, the idea is to provide some sort of, you know, public gathering place, if you will, somewhere that people will, um, people will want to go and, and have a few amenities like those boutique retailer restaurant type uh, places to, um, you know, to draw in some, some traffic there. Um, like Troy mentioned, the vast majority, 90% of the parking would be underground and out of sight. And um, I think that gives kind of a, a brief overview of everything. Uh, again, as you can see, we've tried to model the, um, model the site plan after that 2005-2006 plan that was well received and utilized the four corners of this property with a with a nice you know a nice central focal point with the uh, water feature in the middle and everything kind of revolves around that so I think from there it might be best to open it up for questions comments from 
anybody who has them, or I don't know if uh, Caitlin wants to moderate or how we want to take it from here, but that's, that's kind of the brief overview of everything. Great. Thank you. Um, uh, Caitlin, do you have questions or any comments in advance? I do not. No, sir. Okay. Um, why don't we begin with, um, let, let's just try and divide this up. Anybody on the planning and zoning have some questions, comments? Yes, hi, it's Dee Dee. I have, I have a comment or a question. Hi, <laughs> I'm back on video. Um, yeah, so my questions would be regarding the assisted living portion. Um, is that well care or like what services? I mean, are they ambulatory or can you tell me about what you envision in terms of the care for the people who would be living there? Because I'm thinking of it also in terms of Will they be using that space? Is that recreational sort of plaza for them as well? And you know, what are, what would their needs be? Yeah, absolutely. So the assisted living would be a combination of what is referred to as assisted living and with memory care. So these are folks that need help with their activities of daily living. So um, perhaps getting getting dressed or going to the bathroom or you know medication management those types of things. So it is a, um, a moderate degree of acuity in terms of care needed, but mm -hmm. they are still residents that are, you know, largely able to get around and, you know, would certainly make use of the outdoor, outdoor space there. And how many people would that hold, that facility? How many occupants? Yeah. So we are showing 120 beds so 120 residents, which for density calculations is the equivalent of 40 dwelling units. Um, Frank can probably confirm that uh, the town's interpretation that three assisted living beds is the equivalent of one dwelling unit. Um, would any of those units have in-room um, like cooking facilities or do they go to a, a central dining room? And I, I'm just yeah, thinking there was from like a safety perspective um, you know, are they cooking in the room and packing anything? Sure. Um, so there is central dining. Um, the rooms typically have kitchenettes. So there would be, you know, a refrigerator and a sink. But generally speaking, you don't have, you know, you're certainly not going to have a, a gas stove in there or, or anything like that. So most of the, the I would say 95% of the residents rely on the central dining um, for their food needs. I see. And then you said with the residential condos, that, that's not a 55 and over, that's just open to anybody? That is open to anybody and everybody. Okay, that, that's all for now. Thank you. Uh, this is Michael Stern. Um, you said there were 120 units. Is that 60 in each block? So that's roughly how it would uh, break down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Paul, Paul Shea, uh, Planning Zoning. Uh, on, on the condo units, how many units are in the condos? We are showing 100. 100 units. And that's over both buildings? Yeah, Correct. the two buildings in the front, yes. And which floors are occupied? Three, four, five, six? Oh, six. Parking's underground, right? Yeah, the parking's underground, so all six floors would be uh, habitable. Uh, would be, um, would have units on it. Except in the- uh, In the center. The center the area, corner. you'd have an opening for the drive to come in. And in the corner, you have your restaurant, 8,000 square feet. Right. Yeah, you'd have the restaurant, retail, and uh, coffee shop, ice cream shop, whatever goes in the 8,000 square feet, yes. So approximately how big are each of the condo units? Uh, I think we've averaged about 2,500 square feet, Derek, uh, right now, just yeah. for planning purposes. We probably, when we get down to the final design, we'll have a mix of uh, maybe some smaller units and then maybe even some larger units. It'll, it'll probably be averaged out based on uh, the market area right now. And what's the yeah, uh, average ceiling height? Nine feet? 
Um, I would say that we would try to at least get nine feet uh, in the condo buildings. Okay. Uh, that's all my questions for now. Sure. Okay. Mr. Hamilton, did you have any questions? If so, you can unmute yourself. In the meantime, and Steedy, I, I have one more question. What would the price point be for the condos approximately? So let me elaborate on what George was saying about the average size and, and so on. The, the vision would be to have, you know, a handful, um, maybe a dozen or so um, smaller units at a more affordable price point in the four or $500,000 range to, um, you know, to, to appeal to some of those that, you know, aren't looking for number one, a huge, a huge space. And number two, those that are, again, you know, looking in that price point. Um, for a two bedroom, you know, you'd be looking at roughly a million dollars, give or take. And, you know, a three bedroom could be, you know, up to, you know, 1.5, you know, up to two. Um, that's a, a very broad generalization, but I think, um, Again, a blended average of roughly 2,500 square feet across the board is, is generally what we're shooting for. And the other thing too is that you have to realize that as you get up to four, five, and six floors, uh, there'll be ocean views and those will make those units more desirable. There'll be more, uh, and we probably will do some uh, larger units on the top floor so that there's, uh, so those will be in the price range as uh, Derek has just indicated. Mm -hmm. okay. did, Caitlin, did, did Bob or Jim have any comments or questions? I have not seen or heard from either. Um, Mr. Ferguson, did you have any questions? No questions, thank you. Okay, anything else from the folks on planning and zoning? All right, council member, questions, comments? Uh, Mayor, it's Jim, I do. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, I have uh, two main concerns. Uh, one concern is the density. The applicant is asking for 25.5 units per acre. The code allows 18 units per acre. Under a PUD, it allows 22 units per acre. Uh, members of both the uh, Town Council and Planning and Zoning Board strongly voiced their objection to the Palm Beach County Board of County Commissioners to increase the density of units per acre at the Lennox project. So why would the Town Council or Planning and Zoning Board approve the applicant's density request when we strongly opposed the density request, a lower density request for the Lennox North project? This proposed project, along with the Lennox project, will have a huge traffic impact on Donald Ross Road. My second concern is the, uh, is the height. The code allows 60 feet. The applicant is requesting 72 feet. In 2005, a developer requested a code change to increase the height at US-1 and Donald Ross Road. At a town council meeting, Juno Beach residents submitted a petition to the town council with over 500 signatures in opposition to a code change that would increase the height. These are my two concerns that the applicants requesting are the density and the height. That, that's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Um, George, did you want to address that or how would you like to handle that? Well, I think, first of all, I appreciate your comments, uh, uh, Councilman Lyons. Um, we looked at this based on the, the um, discussions that we had when we brought in the uh, condominium buildings for the Juno Point uh, project. And there was some discussion at that point that possibly a six floor might be, um, might be acceptable to the council in regards to this location um, because it's on US-1 and um, and you have to remember that these are not um, these are not uh, 
uh, small apartments and uh, certainly not in the essential workforce area. Um, these are going to be higher end um, condominium units. And whether we do a age restriction or not, I know that we said no at this point. There's always a possibility to deal with that uh, to reduce the uh, traffic impacts. Um, of course, the ALF is going to have limited traffic because those people will be in place. They'll have visitors, of course, but um, we'll have a limited amount of um, required parking uh, and traffic from that facility will be quite quite a bit less. So that's that's right now. But we appreciate your comments. We need to talk to the client. We, the client needs to understand that. So, okay. As a follow-up to that, um, our planning and zoning director, Frank, or if, if you're there, can you compare for us um, what was the uh, the change? What was the density that was the issue at the Lennox project? Uh, the the Lennox project, I, I have the numbers here. It's a 250 unit um, project, and the size of the lot is 11.14 acres but that does bring you to 22.4 or 22.44 for um, uh, dwelling units per acre and i believe um, this project is around the 25.5 and the 25.5 includes the um, alf can uh yeah equivalency of those beds. They're not really units. They're, we're taking three beds to be an equivalent unit. Um, and uh, there's a big difference between a, a AFL, uh, assisted living unit and a regular unit in regards to impacts to the area, so. George, along those lines, if, if I could follow up with you, what um, I, I Certainly appreciate the the distinction with the the AL the nature of the ALF units and being folks that, that are not going to they're, they're not coming and going as often. But um, to the extent that there's any concern by the council on the local traffic impact, uh, there would be employees coming and going on a daily basis, and there would also be visitors for those beds. What what do you is there any uh, estimate as far as the number of employees? Uh, I'd have to rely on Derek to tell me what he's going to need for um, 120 beds. I'm sure there'll be three, uh, he'll have three, two, two or three um, shifts on that facility, but I'll let Derek go ahead and answer. Yeah, so as a general rule of thumb, there would be three shifts. The busiest shift would be, of course, the daytime one, which is typically 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., and that you are seeing Again, generally speaking, you would have roughly 30 employees um, on that shift. So, um, you know, obviously this isn't a formal traffic study or anything like that, but perhaps it gives you a, a sense of what kind of, you know, movement there may be. It, it does. Thank you, Derek. Um, all right. Um, Stu, Peggy? Yeah, I have comments, but I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to speak. Go, go ahead, Stu. Has every is everybody else done? Peggy, why don't you, why don't you talk if you'd like? You want to like? We have Bob Hamilton on now. I think we might. Just Bob, are you there? Okay, so I'll go ahead and go. Um, can every, can everyone hear me? Okay. Yes. 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 Okay, good. Um, I have had extensive conversation um, with Derek and, of course, Lois. And uh, so most of my technical questions, I've, you know, kind of talked to Frank and, and been through those. So I, I want to, um, I want to give more of a big picture here and talk a little bit about that. But I do want to say thank you, um, Derek, for and Lois for your input, your open um, and understanding of the I think that's important. Um, the main concern I think that we should all have is if this development is compatible with our town. Uh, this is our northern gateway to Truby, 
whatever is developed there, we want it to enhance our four corners first, as well as enhance the quality of life. In um, we want it to be quaint, pedestrian friendly, incorporate really the lifestyle that we enjoy here. Um, so I'm sure that's what most of the residents want. Now, what we have to look at is what we can control and what we can't control. The town can control the density. We can control the height. We can control some aspects of the use that with the developer um, through a special exception or a PUD or additional heights or even an overlay. But without us owning the land, we have to work with the developer and the investor that come along to see if we can combine economically feasible them and what our real vision is for those corners. So we know that a developer has to have some kind of economic benefit to invest. Um, and in my opinion, we want residents that want to invest in this town with ownership of the community. So that was extremely important to me. Um, so Let's talk a little bit about, we know what we want, and we know what we want from the developer, but what don't we want to have happen on that corner? That's a very important question that nobody really talks about. And if we talk about straight zoning, um, and Frank, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but straight zoning, you can build something with only coming to P and Z and council with a site plan. Our town cannot really, cannot really say that they want something, we can approve the site plan, but unless it creates a health, safety, or wellness, welfare issue, um, we'd be hard pressed to fight something that was going there. So what could that be? Well, we could, they could put a Home Depot, a Publix, maybe a small Walmart, and all of these services would happen with great zoning. So the question has to be, that becomes to both planning and zoning and council um, is do we work with someone that is willing to make changes to the plan and to try to get the majority of what we'd like to see in town or do we say no to plans because they're not perfect? Um, and I'm, I'm going to ask everyone to really think about that question. When I saw this plan, I really wasn't happy with an AFM. Um, I can't say, you know, I, I can't say that I was, but after discussing the plan, um, I was assured that the residential condo units would be sold more in the long term condo. I expressed an interest in having more mixed use that would extend from the, the, mm, the southeast to the southwest of the first building um, and also extending back to the north of the building. Um, I wanted it to be more pedestrian friendly. I wanted to see bench. I wanted to see areas where our residents go and enjoy that coffee and enjoy that ice cream. Um, and that was important to me. And when I looked at the Juno Point plan, I saw that in there a little bit more. So that's something that Derek and I uh, talked about. And that's something that I think he said he was willing to, you know, be open about. Um, we know that development as it is is falling for two points dwelling units, right? So that's 3.5 more units than what's allowed. So maybe a suggestion is to allow more mixed use on the lower floor, like I was speaking about earlier, um, more of that pedestrian friendly lower level um, with seat areas, grab, grab that coffee, grab that ice cream. I just love that idea. Um, as far as the height um, goes, I realize that it's stories on the corner. Um, in my discussion with, with Frank, if you were to develop something there and you were to allow a development with higher height, um, going to see floors, you would want to do it like they've done it. You want to go from Plaza Lanier to the three story, the height being um, on the corner of Donald Ross, or excuse me, US 1. Um, they can have four stories, there are four stories in right now. With the PUD, they can have five stories. And if the overlay just go to the six story. So the question is, how do we all feel about six story? And then you have to go back to the question of what would you rather do? Would you rather end up with something that none of us want to see because we couldn't see the forest or the trees, 
or do we want to work with the developer that is willing to work with us and get what we would like to see, but maybe not have it totally perfect? So I'm asking these important questions because we all need to think about that. Um, you know, am I totally happy with what I see? No, but I, if the understanding of the um, to work with the constant, I am going to suggest that perhaps we put this on the agenda for Wednesday so council can <coughs> possibly look at a couple of. I'm sorry, Betty, you're breaking up just a little bit. Okay. So, see if that, I, I, the last thing I said was that I'd like to see this on the agenda for Wednesday also, so if we could. And maybe let the council talk about this a little, a little bit more in depth. See how maybe um, the developer has worked with some of the questions that we have, and maybe let him answer a few questions for us. But um, you know, that's that's my feeling right now on, mm -hmm. on the project. Uh, this is Bob Hamilton. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, thank you all. Um, I have a couple of brief comments, if I may. If I may. Um, Juno Beach has had a wonderful history, and we've had a lot of people over the last number of decades that have worked very hard in building a community that we're all proud of. Um, having said that, we have been, as a community and as our council and our planning and zoning members, uh, we have been very diligent and been uh, good, good, good neighbors to a drug rehab center, a um, assisted living, and we're dealing with them right now. And now we're dealing with with you folks uh, that is dealing with a piece of property that is the closest, I believe, that Route One comes to the ocean in all of Florida. And as we're all aware in light of the epidemic that's going on, the need and demand for residential property, for quality of life, for family values and people is growing quicker than anybody anticipated six and nine months ago. And I would say, based on what's going on in major cities and what's going on in Florida, Texas and other, other areas, in Tennessee and in the Carolinas and other shore neighborhoods, this property will be in high demand. I personally believe that this space should be built in the light that it's been zoned for, for high quality residential use with the right mix of retail to support it. And as my council members and as my uh, planning and zoning members are saying, who live here in Juno Beach, we really appreciate the quality of life that's been given to us and we wanna maintain it going forward. That's my comment, thank you very much. Yeah, hi, it's Didi. I'm just gonna make one quick comment, um, something I think needs to be stated. Personally, I did not see this site plan. I don't know if anybody else on planning and zoning saw this. I, I did reach out to Frank and ask if there was any backup materials for this meeting. Um, he didn't have anything to share at that time. So just please be aware that I did not have a chance to review this prior to the call. Um, Stu? Yeah, Jason, do you have anything you want to add or you want me to take it? You, you go ahead. Thank you. Uh, first, I want, to, I want to thank Derek and Lois for their interaction with the council mm. during this period of due diligence because I think that the cooperative spirit that I've seen over the last couple of weeks is something that I had wished that we had seen with the current owner of the property. And I think that uh, Juno Beach has made a, a real effort to air our feelings. And when I spoke at the last town council meeting, uh, I, I thought that I really did want to get on a second bite at the apple where we can have a second discussion of this Wednesday night. I, uh, it's currently on the agenda to have a discussion anyway of the 2004 plan from the Treasure Coast people for this property. And I, I thought it was a logical addition. In fact, Jason, I'd like to propose ahead of time that we move that up so that after we finish, after we finish millage budget and budget corrections that we make that you know, the next, very next item. And, and of course, that's, your, that's the privilege of council on Wednesday. So I would like to have a follow-up discussion on Wednesday. 
Uh, I had a prior discussion with the, I prior discussion directly with Derek and Lois, and I had said that my vision for this property was high end residential communities and likely, and mostly for the reasons that Bob had specified that it's such a desirable location on US one. Bob said in the state of Florida, I think it's in the, in the entire US, and just after you come across the Keys Bridge to up to the end of Maine, frankly, but nonetheless, this is a highly desirable real estate corner, a highly desirable corner for residential real estate. I, I think the thing I want to address with my time is the concerns Jim had raised, which is primarily height and density. Uh, there is an ask in the, there's a big ask in this proposal, and that is to go from the five stories allowed under a PUD to six. So um, I appreciate the concern for that, although I also recognize that the commercial value of the property really is up in the air rights up there. And, and, and that from a practical standpoint is what's gonna make or break this project economically, in my opinion, as a doctor. You know, This is really not my area of expertise. So I think height's important for the project to succeed. And I think that if you, specifically addressing this, Jim, if you look at the, the plans for Route 1 from West Palm Beach North through Lake Park through, through North Palm Beach, the closest example being the project at North Beach Plaza, there's going to be a massive increase in height and density along the US-1 corridor. In my opinion, this represents appropriate tapering with the master plan of the well, the vision I see happening from uh, highest buildings being close down to the south end of US-1 above West Palm. So I'm, I'm not so opposed to the, the height. I think that I'd like to trade though. We talked to, when I spoke to Lois and to Derek, we were talking about essential services housing. George, you were not at that meeting, but uh, there, was, there was consideration being given to putting some of the lower level, smaller units into the sales component of essential services housing. And I would say, if we're gonna go up, I would like to see a linkage between those two plans. Um, the, other, the other major issue in town, of course, is the Waterford. And, and I think these are, these are kind of linked. Uh, I know the, I know the town council has seen my vision letter or the one that was kind of why I voted the way I did on the water bird. I don't know whether that's gone to, to planning and zoning. Caitlin, can you answer that? I believe it was just for the town council. All right, well, let me then give the vision in a nutshell to in my opinion is that the Waterford does need to, ex to expand its scope. It is, now in a, it is now an independent living facility. And I think we should be very clear that what's being proposed for the Western half of this site is not an independent living facility. I mean, these are not people like me who are 70 years old and mobile and whatever, but I want somebody to cook me two squares and do my laundry once a week. But these are people who have developed further needs. There's a gap right now in the Waterford's ability to, to service that population. And that's an increasing population. So with that in mind, what I said is that the Waterford fundamentally needs to expand, but even if they expand their territory by a bit, I don't think they're gonna be able to do a first class job for their independence or for their proposed beds in assisted living and memory care. In a private conversation I had with Derek and Lois, they indicated a willingness to at least open communications with the Waterford and see if this might be a win-win for the entire community. And I, it's not my place to tell two significant businesses how they ought to do their business, but I, if I can't get full residential condominiums on this entire site, uh, I, I do believe that, we're, that we are focusing on an urgent need in the community. And if the 
I would, I would offer this as an augmentation, just to give a minor, now that I think of it and before I forget it, the site plan projected has this large open uh, space in its center. I think if you're gonna run a memory care, it's highly desirable to have a safe external outside space. I like those which are designed so that there's an exit on one side of the building, it kind of snakes along the building in a way. And then when you go back in, you feel like you've actually gone somewhere. But if, if we're gonna approve a memory care, I wanna have a small green space dedicated to the memory care alone. I'm, um, I'm inclined to, to look favorably on the project in its broadest strokes as, as I've outlined, um, but there's an awful lot of discussion that's gonna be needed. <clears throat> Mr. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Could I ask a question of the proposed developer? Absolutely, go ahead. After listening to Vice uh, Mayor's, uh, Mayor Lyon's concern about the height, had you considered perhaps making all the buildings five story and dividing up, uh, in other words, the density would be kept the same, but it would be divided amongst, uh, in other words, it would be more uh, more in the assisted living than proposed in one building, but it would let you spread, spread your condominiums out for sale amongst three buildings, which I think in part uh, addresses some of Stu's concern for wanting to see more, um, uh, more ownership, residential ownership. Sure. Um, you know, we have, let me even take a step back and give kind of the broadest overview of the path that we've come down with this our initial vision out of the gate was was solely and purely senior living uh, across the whole spectrum from independent living to assisted living and, and memory care um, on this site and as we spoke with folks we realized that the condominiums were were a great desire to uh to quite a few people and so we have Kind of altered our game plan a little bit and come in with this the the biggest thing with the condominiums adding adding condos to the western half of the property does not benefit things nearly as much as having that sixth story because as council member katz had mentioned it's really those you know the sixth floor the the ocean views are really what's make the project economically feasible. Um, now, all of that being said, I think our, you know, willingness to be creative and to find ways to try to appease as many people as possible um, certainly opens things up to the idea of um, extending, you know, five stories on the Western side for a condo building or, um, you know, we, the point is we have flexibility with how we can approach things. Um, the ultimate goal is to find, for us to find this intergenerational type mix of uses that I think, um, number one, serves the existing need in the community for the assisted living beds. I mean, our, our demand study shows that you will have a need of well over 300 assisted living and memory care beds um, in the next four years. And if we can provide something that meets that need while also servicing the need that has been explained of, you know, people wanting to move there, um, families moving from, whether it's from up north or even from further south in Miami, um, people want to live in this area. And if we can provide the housing for that, it's a win-win for everybody. So you're bringing in new residents that want to, you know, lay down their roots in Juneau while also servicing the existing residents that have needs as you know, as they continue to age. So that's the, the ultimate goal with the site is to try to service as many people as possible. Um, and how, you know, how physically it works out is, you know, that is certainly open for, for change. Um, <clears throat> but that's, that's kind of the, the approach that we're taking, if, if all of that makes sense. Thank you for allowing me to plant that thought. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's Dee Dee. Uh, Derek, I have a question. Have you reached out to Palm Beach County about, um, you know, ambulance and rescue kind of 
and how that would work? I mean, if there's seniors, there might be, you know, somewhat more emergencies. Are, are they okay with this kind of density plan and, and how to respond to that? We have not had discussions with um, the emergency responders regarding that at this stage. Um, I've got uh, Frank uh, Davila. I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot again, if that's okay. Um, yes, can you can you remind me what is the the current um, what's the current zoning? And and to Peggy's point, are we looking potentially at a at a Home Depot, a, a, a sort of junior sized Walmart? What what are we, you know, from from a current zoning perspective, what are we looking at there potentially? All right, so yeah, it is owned uh, commercial general zoning district CG. Um, under the permitted uses and preferred uses, you have things such as retail, um, you have service establishments, department stores, professional offices, health spas, um, all the way to banks and financial institutions. Now, on the preferred permitted uses, you have um, transient residential facilities, you have hotels, motels residential, which in this case is, is a mixed use project. So 75% um, residential, 25% commercial. Um, and those are uh, preferred and permitted. And, and there's actually a, a few more in there you can do. And, and they go more into detail, such as like, you know, a, a bakery, sandwich shop, uh, landscape nursery. <laughs> yeah, a nursery is a preferred permitted use on the okay. zoning district, but there, there's many. And can you give us a sense what, um, for comparison purposes, what, what kind of traffic impact does that have? Well, uh, one, and, and I guess for, if it were office space or, or a hotel, motel, I, and I know George, George may have some of this information from, from prior uh, discussions that, that we've had, but I'm just trying to get a, a a range or, or try to get a sense of what, um, what, what kind of in and out traffic we're, we're looking at with some of those other uses. Um, I, I won't be able to give you an exact number unless there's a traffic study performed, but you got to remember that this has been vacant for a number of years. So anything is going to make a, a big impact. Um, right before when we had the previous workshop, we had uh, Mr. Brent come in, do the workshop with, with staff. And I, and it, at that time, C. Oates was opposing, um, you know, that proposed, um, that proposed project. Um, so I, I believe any type of use is, is you know, it, people are going to complain about it. People are going to come and then talk to staff, council. Um, when you compare residential versus commercial, um, residential, depending on, on who you're targeting for residential, you're gonna have a lot of people come in, um, leaving the house 7, 8 a.m., a lot of them coming back 5, 6 p.m., where in commercial, you have um, that traffic throughout the entire day, depending on what commercial use you have. Um, George, do, do you have any actual numbers that you may be able to share? Well, no, we haven't, we haven't looked at anything that level yet, but you need to keep in mind that on the residential units, because it's a, even though it's condominiums, it's still a multifamily. You're talking about seven trips a day per unit. Um, and that's just uh, it, not age restricted as standard condominium unit. The ALF is going to be considerably lower because those people are not as mobile while they can probably leave the area, not the memory care, of course. Um, uh, but the trips coming uh, out of an ALF, even with the employees who are coming in on a shift, um, you know, uh, just during the day, which is our peak times, because at night, you're not going to have anybody probably leaving much out of the condominium building. You're going to have mostly the day trips on that. And so you have 30 employees, so that's 60 trips. Um, and then if you had another I don't know, 40 trips out of the beds in the, uh, that's one trip per, per bed or per uh, equivalent unit. Um, you still be way below just the standard commercial shopping center that we showed 
when we did the, the comparison plans, I think we had something like 120,000 square feet of commercial on here, which was, which was actually a permitted use. It wasn't a special exception. Um, and uh, you'd have substantially more traffic coming out of that retail facility um, all day long than you would anything like this, so. I'd like to add a comment. Uh, and that has to do with the one of my favorite projects, which is the potential expansion of Donald Ross Road. I'm not sure if people are aware that phase one of that or segment one of that, which is the widening of Donald Ross to six lanes has been funded. And that's from Prosperity Palmwood across the bridge. I'm not exactly sure the termination, uh, but I think it's just before, uh, what's it called? The road Wilson. that goes down, huh? Ellison Allison Wilson. Wilson, yeah. Phase two is, uh, is still way up in the air, but I will tell you that I've had active discussions with people on the Planning and Transportation Board, and that's a, a project I really do think that, particularly if we're developing or redeveloping this corner, extending six lanes, and the big one's the bridge, and we're gonna get six lanes across the bridge soon. But the real big thing for me is getting six lanes all the way to US-1, and I think that's, that's viable. It's gonna have a huge effect on our ability to handle traffic. Okay, anybody else have any questions or comments? I got one more, but it's, it's, it's another, compared to the other ones that have been expressed, it's pretty little league and it's, it's just a concept or just an idea. The original uh, site plan that I saw had an open area at the north side going into the parking lot by Trusco and that area. I don't know if this is feasible, but the issue for me is the um, asymmetric use of parking in the area. There's a, there, because it's a, was it TRW, is that right? The tire company has offices in that plaza. The, there's a horrible parking situation uh, further to the west, but the space to the north tends to be underutilized as parking. So my question is, 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 it, is it legal to blow through there and create, a, um, create an, an offload, or that is a backdoor entrance exit, but also one which would allow this community to offload some parking into a relatively underutilized parking area they don't own. There are, I believe, um, easements to connect from one property to the other. That might be one location. And I know um, when, um, when Troy was talking about the project, Juno Point also had one um, right in the center. Um, on the west property line. So it, it I is think that would be in the best interest of the community as a whole to allow to bleed out ex excess parking and balance it, frankly. Council Member Wheeler, did you have a comment? I do, just two things. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the essential service housing. And so Derek knows my position on that. I think the county has that under control. As we've seen with Lenox Beach Plaza, um, they're more than happy to give the developers um, and let the developers utilize on the affordable housing. And so I think US-1 is possibly could become inundated and with that. And I have asked the county several times if they have a master plan for the essential housing, because I would hate to see some of these older shopping centers all be turned into a mega complex developed residential units that all have the essential housing. So I'm not sure that that's something that I would be interested in and in adding density to that area. The other thing, Frank, is if you can make a comment on, um, so that it's clarified on the retail space and allowing what I need. Because we talked about that a little bit earlier today. And with the retail space, those things that I mentioned could come in, correct? Am I correct on that? I'm sorry, Peggy. If I think you were speaking with me, but um, to me, but I, I cannot make out what I you said. Okay, I wanted a clarification on what is considered the retail space. So I mentioned the Home Depots, I mentioned the Publix, which I had in a plan originally, right? They came in with a while back. Could you just explain that so that that everyone is clear on those those um, 
developments that I mentioned that could come in and how it how it is part of a retail space so that we're all clear on that. I'm, I'm sorry, I still didn't get the question. Um, like, are, are you asking me to see what the permitted uses are or, or where uh, for? So when we talked earlier, we talked about Home Depot, we talked about public having an initial interest in that plan. And these are all re what's considered retail space, correct? Correct, yes. So, so. Okay. That's so the I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, no, no. Um, yeah, so for this property, we, we have had interest from Walgreens before, which is a permitted use in the zoning district. That's back in the 2000s. Um, we also had uh, Publix, uh, Greenwise, try to come in, um, which is a permitted use. We, we then had Mr. Brand come in with, uh, you know, the apartment slash condos and hotel um, project. A hotel is a permitted use, if not a preferred use actually, um, under that zoning district. So all of those projects would, would be, um, as we call it, um, straight zoning. Well, that one had a wow wow. So. Right. So. Yes, but the, so the hotel correct. aspect of it, it is a permitted use, the hotel. So Frank, if the Publix wanted to come in and put a two level or a Target wanted to come in and put it up to a four story retail building there, is that permitted? It, it is a permitted use. It still goes through the site plan approval, um, DRC planning and zoning town council and um, as, um, as you mentioned before, the reason to deny a project like that, that's straight zoning, um, would have to be a great one. It would have to be life safety and, and possibly Len can, can jump on that to see you know, any other reasons why um, council might say no, but it is in our code as a permitted use. All right, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments from planning and zoning from council? Yeah, Mayor, this is Jim again. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, I have a question for Derek. Are you there, Derek? Yes, I am. Okay, uh, I've met with you and your team twice. And uh, when I first met with you, your, your proposal on uh, US-1 and Donald Ross was a ALF, an additional living facility, which included independent living, which I think was 100 apartments, assisted living, which I think was, uh, was it 40 or 60? I think it was 40. And 20, and 20 memory care, is that correct? Correct. Uh, okay. And you also told me that your family specialized in, uh, in adult living facilities and you have them up north, is that correct? Correct. Senior living has been our family stronghold since the 1950s. Okay, and, and this is what you originally proposed, and uh, for, from what I saw, it looked pretty good. And then when I met with you the second time, it was completely changed. The uh, independent, uh, you know, apartments for adult living facility were eliminated. Um, retail was added, the, uh, the restaurant and the condominium. So what, what changed between our first and second meeting? Sure, so when we initially came in uh, when we initially got this piece of land under contract and we initially had our discussions with yourself and all of your other uh, council members and other colleagues. Um, that was our original thought process was to go purely with a, an independent living, assisted living and memory care facility. As we spoke with folks, we, we realized that that is frankly not the majority of the town's desire. Um, there is a strong desire to see residential for sale luxury condominiums to appeal to that growing and coming population. So we have to make a strategic decision to either, uh, you know, we have two options. Do we either try to ram, ram through our, you know, our initial vision and 
and frankly, be the bad guys that try to, you know, just do what we want to do and not listen to anybody else? Or do we take that constructive feedback, try to turn it into something that can work for, you know, as many people as possible and show that we are willing to be flexible and, and easy to work with? And ultimately, we chose that, that latter route. Um, All right. Thank is, you. Guys. It is. Sure. If I could ask a follow-up question to Vice Mayor Lyons' question to Derek, and, and that is, since you've, in, 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 in this design change to standard condominiums on the east and ALF slash memory care on the west, and you've upped your beds on that side from 60 to 120, could you confirm your your willingness to discuss with management of life space and locally the Waterford on some sort of cooperative venture on the site? A absolutely. Frankly, that would be a, um, a phenomenal route to go if it were to work out for everybody involved as, you know, as you stated, it's a need that they have. And this could be a, a great potential opportunity to fill that need and to work with, you know, an established business in the town um, that people look favorably on. Um, that would be a, frankly, a win-win for everybody as I see it. So we would certainly uh, be open and frankly desire to have those, those conversations. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Um, I, I think we had a request to add this to the agenda. I, I think with the existing agenda item, I, I don't know that we need to add anything. I think it's a natural, uh, as, as somebody mentioned, it, it's going to be a natural segue to have this as a, a discussion item. I think it's more of a uh, possibly just a, I don't even know that formally we need to amend the agenda. I think it's part of the discussion anyway, especially having this information, I think we'll We'll, we'll be able to uh, uh, exchange our thoughts and, and ideas uh, a little more thoroughly. Um, George, if, if you don't mind, I, I know there was some effort to try and get this workshop uh, out ahead of the, either ahead of, ahead of the council meeting, but you also had some deadlines or some timing issues. Can yeah, you, uh, we we need we have um, uh, Derek's got a time time sensitive contract uh, that he has to do certain things with, and that's one of the reasons that we asked for this workshop. And we really really appreciate the town uh, uh, reacting as they did and getting us here today to have some discussion. It, it's all in a in an effort to get Derek comfortable with what's going on. Um, the council meeting. Uh, you know, I think, Derek, I think you'd be available for the council meeting Wednesday to at least be there in case there's any questions. And um, one of us or both of us will be uh, uh, from our office can can be there as well online, just like we're doing now. So um, but I again, it is uh, he's in his due diligence period. And we all know what that is uh, when we're buying real estate. <laughs> So George, George, if you can kind of, I, I'm not asking you to, to cut to the chase, but if, maybe, maybe just give us a, what is it that you and your client would, would like to hear from council and, and by when, or, or is this just more a, a sense of feedback and, uh, and, and more for discussion, I, I, just for clarity? Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna let Derek answer that because he's the one that um, has got the, the, the checkbook on the line as we call it. Um, I really don't, we can react to whatever we need to. We're trying to help him get to a point where he's comfortable that we can go forward. He can get into the next level of his contract and we can get into more detailed design, which you know you have to understand this is a concept we think it's getting very close, but we still have to tweak things. We still have to work with your staff. We have to get with your engineers. Frank's going to have to work with us quite a bit. So um, Derek, you want to make a comment on that? Sure. So we have to decide uh, next Monday, a week from today, whether or not we are going to proceed with purchasing this land or not. Um, so our goal, you know, with this very short time frame and and let me preface that by saying 
Um, you know, we would have loved to have all kinds of architectural drawings and, and the full scope of plans that was presented um, in the 2006 plan that was approved. But the short time frame, you know, just does not allow for that. Um, mm -hmm. So this is, you know, the best we could do with, with the time that we were given. Um, that being said, our goal is, is really to get a sense of, of whether or not we're on the right track, where, where people stand on, you know, what are the, the issues that are hard nos or what, um, you know, what are people willing to work with? And, you know, up to, up to this point, we've had some fantastic discussions with, with everybody from the town, frankly, it's a, um, it's a change of pace talking with folks down there than dealing with folks up in the north, um, which is uh, which is a pleasant thing. And you know, we are ultimately we are you know easy people to work with, and we're trying to trying to show our flexibility and creativity, and and that we're willing and able and, and trying our best to appease as many people as possible. So our goal is ultimately to you know obviously you know we're not trying to get site plan approval on Wednesday. But we're trying to get a sense of, are we on the right track? What are going to be, you know, what is a hard no? Is is six stories an absolute no for some people? And and we know that it is. Um, is the density a big concern? Is is traffic the main issue? What, you know, what is the town looking at, um, you know, from a, a broader perspective when they look at this site? So we're just trying to get as comfortable as we can um, with where people stand on things and where you know, where people think the site should go uh, before we ultimately decide whether or not to pull the trigger. Good. I have a comment. Right. And anybody else have? Yes, Lois? Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, just to commend my son on, you know, the great job he's doing with this, but our ultimate vision is to make this, we know it's an important corner in your town and frankly we've kind of fallen in love with the area um, from the minute we knew this property was available both he and i who have seen it several times before it even became available were like oh my gosh this is the most beautiful corner in juno i think we can do something wonderful there um, we certainly don't want to do anything that's not going to be uh, beneficial to all members of society uh, all members of juno uh, all the residents we want to make everybody happy as much as possible um, we recognize that there's a need for the assisted living side of it, as our market studies have shown. Um, we've heard the town, we've heard your council members and the people we've talked to that there's a, a strong desire for residential. So we're trying to make this work for everyone. And um, we mm -hmm. really think we can, can make, it, make it a beautiful thing. And it can be a, 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 a gathering spot for your community and people that will want to go there and spend some time there. Um, it's an important corner and we feel it's part of us as well. I mean, I, I just, I have such a vision for what it could be and I just hope that we can all mm. come together and, and make it the beautiful thing that your town deserves. Thank you. And, and let me, let me add one more thing, Mayor, if I may. Uh, we are not simply looking to come in, build something, sell and get out. We are long-term holders. Um, you know, obviously the condominiums would have to be sold, but the assisted living I want to hold on to that forever. I want to show my kids this project and say, hey, this is what we did. It needs to be something that we are proud of, something that is, again, this is a gateway corner. And, and we're not in the business of just trying to do cookie cutter projects in as many places as possible just to make a quick buck. Ultimately, it's about, you know, quality over quantity. I know it's the town's, the town's concept. And, and that's frankly our approach to everything as well. So, that's why we feel that, um, you know, all of this could be a great fit for, for everybody involved. And, you know, again, with our short time frame, trying to, trying to get a feel for as much as possible here. Oh, thank you both. And um... uh, I have a quick question, Bob Hamilton, please. Go ahead, am, am I, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, am I correct in saying then with that summary that if the council came back and said the recommendation is to build uh, four facilities that are luxury condominiums that you would not buy the property? I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? I'm not I'm sorry. Based, on, based on what you just said, your mission is is a combination of luxury condominiums and healthcare facility that Correct. if the council came back 
and said, we would like you to build luxury condominiums only, that that would not meet your vision, your mission statement, and that you would not want to uh, go forward with the project? It would require some serious consideration on our end. Um, we are generally not in the business of doing condominiums. Um, that being said, we are you know, happy to venture into this um, to make it work. But if we were, if it was very clear that it was solely condominiums, that would be a, a serious conversation that we'd have to have on our end. Okay. I appreciate that. <clears throat> and if it's Didi, I have one other question. Um, would you be able to provide us the names or some of the other facilities that you own if we were interested in seeing what those look like as developed in the other areas that you have them? Sure, I'm more than happy to provide whatever materials, um, however best to do that through Caitlin or directly, whatever, um, whatever works. Because mm -hmm. I'd I, recommend you take a look at the Dahlia Capital website, which is pretty good. That'll well, give you everything. Uh, Derek, you can give out the, the, the line, but you're, I found your company's website very useful. Yeah, I would be interested in learning more about what you have already you know, established. Sure, sure. It might be easiest if I, Caitlin, it might be easiest if I send you, um, send you everything and you distribute accordingly. Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? All right, there being no other questions or comments, we're, we're adjourned and um, we'll, we'll take it up Wednesday as uh, for further discussion on the current agenda item that addresses that, uh, that section of town. Thank I'm you all. Council members and planning commission, thank you very much for uh, uh, put, putting your time in today to help our client out. Thank you so much. Thank you, George. Thank you, Derek. I think Thank this was a very productive session for, for everyone. Thank you, Jason, for leading it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank all, you.